Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode in my updated for 2024 Absolute Beginners New Starters Guide to Modding Daisy Community Console Servers, uh, PlayStation and Xbox, although a lot of what I talk about is perfectly applicable to PC2. So in this video, we're going to talk about something very, very important, that is server restarts. So I'm going to show you how to turn off the automated restarts on your Nitrado server, and then we're going to use the uh, emission file. We're going to do some coding, <laughs> sort of, to change the messages.xml to make our server restart. But I thought I'd just start here. So I'm in the browser for Xbox, and as you can see, the um, server that we're going to be working on throughout this whole series of videos is their 1BG Scale Speeder Gaming Xbox. So there we go. So the whole point of this series is as we go through, um, uh, I'm actually uh, modding a server myself. Now remember, in the description below this video, you'll find a link to the playlist that has all these new updated for 2024 server guide, a community server modding guides so feel free to click on that and find the particular subject you're interested in and you'll also find links to the previous video and the next video because I'm trying to do this in some sort of logical order so if you're brand new to this start at the first one days or daisy comes to community server what why should you buy what you can and can't do and then you'll and work your way through them but obviously if you're using this as a reference then you know you're going to choose the particular one you're after also bear in mind that i'm recording this in may 2024 daisy is constantly updating itself so sometimes the videos i record are wrong because the game gets updated so especially if you find some of my content or other people's content through youtube searches or google searches or bing searches always have a look at the tutorial about when it was made because if it's several years old, it may be out of date. A lot of stuff is still the same, but some stuff has changed. Anyway, I digress. So let's have a look to see how you can get your server to restart. Now, like any computer, the server that runs your, your Daisy community server, the computer that runs it, which is in a rack in at Nitrado, in this case, it's in a German server farm somewhere in Germany, um, every now and again, you know, if you don't restart it, it starts to perform poorly, so it'll start to slow down, it'll start to get laggy, um, it may well even crash and not turn back on again. So it's a good idea, as every good IT guy knows, just to turn it off and turn it back on again. And so that's what we're going to be doing this. So go over to your, um, uh, lo log into Nitrado, go to your servers, and then go to your web interface for your particular server. And then this will then load up the internet's running a little bit slow um, and then we scroll down now the first thing we're going to do we're just going to go to automated tasks here this one here we're just going to click on that and what you should find is your server does have an automated task running at the moment normally it has one and this is a server restart um, and so it means that every, at least every day your server is going to get a restart like this now I prefer to disable this and get rid of it and let the game sort it out. All right, And I have to admit, recently, over the last six months or so, DAISY servers, DAISY console community servers, seem to be a lot more stable than they used to. I don't get all the messages that I used to. Basically, once a day, I would get a message from one of my servers from the people on it saying, it's, it's crashed, it hasn't come up in the browser, there's something wrong. And that doesn't really happen very often. So the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to remove this one. So that is going to sort of go, and and so now the server won't automatically restart ever. The reason why we take this one is it just tends to work. It just goes dunk, and then and then then um, restarts the server. What we want to do is we're going to go into the file browser over here on the left. So you click on file browser, and here we go. So now for the first time in this series, we're diving into the mission files. So the way that a DAISY server works on a simple level is you have a program, let's call it DAISY server.exe. So that runs the server. Um, and then you have what we call the mission files. So the mission files have all the data in that gives your server the flavor that you want to add to it. It might be vanilla. You might not change any of the flavors, but you may well add more loot to make it easier or less loot to make it harder, more infected, more wolves, more bears, more cars, less cars, all that sort of stuff. And that's in the missions folder. Now, 
on Xbox, the Xbox the mission folder is called Daisy XB Missions. On PlayStation, it's PS Missions. And if you're on PC, it's just called Missions. You'll see a few other files when you're on PC first. But all we do is we, we click on this. And then you'll have an option of Chernerus Plus, if it's a Chernerus um, server. If, it's, if you've swapped it to an Enoch server at some point, sorry, I used its special code name there, didn't I? If you swapped it to a Livonia server at some point, it will be called uh, daisyoffline.enoch. So if you're running Livonia, uh, you go into the Enoch folder. And then if you're watching this video in the latter half of 2024, maybe the beginning of 2025, we'll have the new Frostline map as well. So you'll have another option. But this is a Chernera server, so we're going to click on this one. So this is the first time we're kind of seeing these files. Now, it's very important you're very careful with these files. And don't mess around with them unless you know what you're doing, because you can stop your server from working. But we're going to go into the DB directory. This one, here. we're going to click on this one. And we're going to go into the messages.xml file. So we're going to click on that one. And this is now going to open up that particular file on your web browser. Now. Most of the time, I don't recommend you edit your files like this. However, this is a very small file, so your web browser can handle it easily. And the edit we're about to do is incredibly simple. So it would be very difficult to make a mistake. <laughs> but still, still do this careful, because one of the things that I like to say to people when they say, have you got any hints or tips for modding Daisy servers? I say, hmm, OK, well. Um, the thing to remember is it's going to take a lot of time um, and mistakes are inevitable. At some point, you will make a mistake. So always be very, very careful. So what this file does, what the messages file does, is that it can control when your server um, shuts down. And it can also give the people a message as well. Um, and as you learn more about modding your server and get more into it, you may well want to play around with some of these other parts of it, whereby you may want to give people different messages at different times or different messages on the server as well. But I don't recommend you do that yet. We just want to get a simple restart. Now, if we go down here and we look at this section here, this is a typical type of command we're going to come across or message we're going to come across in our XML files. So in the mission, some files are .jsons and some are called a .xml. They're all text files, um, but this is the kind of language that it speaks. And so often with these commands, you'll have or an argument, as sometimes they're called, you, you'll have it will open up and it will say message or something else, and then at the end of it, it will then say backslash or sorry forward slash message, and so that kind of means that within those two phrases that that's where the actual instruction for the server is you always kind of having have an open um, phrase and then you have a closing phrase this will all become more apparent however don't worry about that too much so what we have here is deadline 600 shut down one which means yes and then the text now i know it says hashtag name but the name that will come up will be the name that you have given to your server. So in this case, my server is called 1BG Scale Speeder Gaming Xbox, I think. So it will say 1BG Scale Speeder Gaming Xbox will shut down in, and then it has the minutes. Now, the deadline is 600. So if you get up your calculator, if we do 600 minutes divided by 60, you can see that is 10 hours. So every 10 hours, the server will shut down and restart which is good for the server's health so all we have to do is carefully left click and copy that so we've copied everything there and we right click it and go copy and then you see at the top here it says messages we're just going to left click to the right of messages and we're just going to press return or press enter to make a bit of space and then we're just going to go Control v on the keyboard or right click paste and, and we've pasted that there. Now what we've done is we've moved the messages from inside these remarks here. See this thing here with the left arrow, the exclamation mark and the dash dash. See there's that one there, then all the way down there there's this one here which is dash dash right arrow bracket. And what these do is that whenever the server sees these um, uh, what we call letters or characters, sorry, it ignores anything that's inside them. 
So we would call this it. This is a, a, a way of marking up or remarking your your code. So it's a way of writing something in the files that the server will just go. Well, I'm just going to ignore this. This is for the humans. So when the humans look at this text, they they can read it. But I'm not going to do anything about it. So by copying this bit out of within these uh, characters here and putting it after messages, the server will now look at this bit and go, "Oh, this is an." This is an instruction that I should follow out. And so every 10 hours, I'm going to um, give the people a message saying, um, in uh, a few minutes, I'm going to tell people. Now, what happens is this is actually a countdown. Um, and I think it gives you five minute warning, two minute warning, one minute warning, and then the server shuts down. Don't sweat too much about these warnings, okay? Because if you've ever seen them, and lots of people when you're new to DAD, you've never seen them anyway. They're in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, and they're tiny, and they're in red. And half the time, you don't even notice them. So often, I'll get messages saying, well, how can I edit these? Can I make them bigger? Can I change what it says? And, and no, as, as far as I'm aware, at least at the moment, you can't make them bigger. You can't, can't change the color. I don't think you can even on PC. Um, I'm not dead sure about that one. Um, so there's no point really putting lots of different text down there because people won't see it and they can't read it anyway. And the other thing is that if you start putting lots of messages down there saying, please tell your friends about this server or the rules of the server, it might be PVE only or no base rating or all this sort of stuff. If you end up with lots of statements that keep popping up, after a while, people will just ignore them anyway. And that means they'll ignore the server shutdown warnings. Um, I also happen to think they're a bit immersion breaking when you get a message coming up like that. You know, it takes you out of the game a bit. So I, my advice would be, for now anyway, just do copy that. And what we do is we just click save. That will then save that. And then we just click restart. And that will, do, that will put that into effect. So now, every 10 hours, our community server will do a nice little restart. Um, it will warn the players who are on the server first. And it will mean the server will hopefully run nice and smoothly and <laughs> won't crash too much. I'm touching the wood of my desk right now and giving it a good rub. Um, and the players on your server and yourself will have a much smoother experience. Okay, that's enough from me. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you have it, like, if you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon.